In this tutorial, I will talk about buckling. What is buckling? Buckling is instability that limits the load carrying capacity of the columns. If we do not determine buckling, then we will be highly overestimating the capacity of columns. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to model buckling of columns in Abacus and I will be focusing mainly on elastic critical buckling. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. First, the problem description. This is a problem which I want to solve today. Radius is 10 millimeter, length is 200 millimeter. I have taken this problem from this book. Material is a steel and it is a solid steel rod. I will not only be solving this problem, but I will see what is the effect of length on columns and what is the effect of boundary conditions. Let us see how we can solve this problem. But before I go ahead, I want to compare my results from Abacus with elastic critical buckling load or Euler critical buckling load. Euler critical buckling load, it's a famous formula, PCR or NCR is equal to pi over LCR square EI, where LCR is buckling or effective length, E is modulus of elasticity and I is second moment of area. Let us dive into Abacus and see how we can solve this problem. For modeling the problem, I will be using these nine steps. First step is part where we will create geometry. I will start with part module, double click on part column, 3D deformable wire planar. I will keep the size as 200. Continue. Double click on line. Click here. Click here. Line has been defined. Click on dimension and dimension is 200. Click done. Part has been defined. Second step is property module where we will define materials and assign cross sections. Then I will go to property. Go to material steel elastic 200e3 poison ratio is 0 0.3 click ok material has been defined double click on section call section beam click continue poison ratio is 0 0.3 here i will define a profile call and it's a circular profile click ok radius of circle is 10 click or right profile has been defined then i will assign this section to the column click on column assign this section next thing i want to assign the longitudinal axis of the column click on assign click here and click click ok to confirm that will give me the longitudinal axis of the column third step is assembly module where we will assemble all parts the next thing is assembly go to assembly click on instances click ok fourth step is step module where we define all analysis steps and parameters and then i will go to step and here i want to define a buckling step double click on a step i will say buckle procedure is linear perturbation and buckle click ok now here there are two ways we can determine eigen values length zosh and subspace length zosh is used for multi-degree of freedom systems where large number of eigenvalues are required and subspace is used when we need small number of eigenvalues. Here I will use subspace and I'm requesting 10 eigenmodes. Click here and if when I'll click here 18 will appear and I will accept everything as default. Fifth is interaction module where we define contact interactions and constraints. Sixth is load module where we define boundary conditions and loading. Next is load where I will define boundary conditions and loading. Double click on boundary. I will say fix B. Displacement rotation. Click OK. Click on this point and I will restrain all the boundary conditions here. Click OK. And then I will define another boundary conditions which will be fix T means fix top. Click OK, click on this point, done. And here I will restrain all the boundary conditions except U2 or Y boundary conditions because I'm going to apply a unit load over there. And then click on load and simply say load concentrated force. Click OK, click on this point, OK. And here I'm applying 
negative one newton in this direction whatever eigen mode value i'm going to get from the software i will multiply the load which i'm applying here which is minus one and that will give me elastic critical buckling load you click ok this is done seventh is mesh module where we define mesh size and element type and next i will go to mesh and here first i will go to i want to mesh at part level go to mesh element type click on this section element type is i want to use linear b321 element click ok and i want to seed edge here click here requesting 25 elements click all right then go to mesh and mesh part part has been meshed now eighth is job module which we use to run and monitor analysis i will go to job i will create a job i will say simply e buckle click ok then simply set up the working directory and save the file and i will submit the job monitor a clean solution and finally ninth is visualization module used for viewing results then click on here and see results here see the first mode is 1.5455 into 10 raised to 6 and i will multiply one with this one it means that 1455 kilonewton let us see what we have got from elastic critical load so this is a fixed fixed situation length is 200 and from fe i've got 1455 5, and from theoretical value i've got 1550 5, which is quite close but remember that this kind of column this is a stocky column a stocky column means it's short and bulky column it's not going to fail by elastic critical buckling but it is going to fail by its material strength and we are talking about this range where this slenderness is 0. 2 and here slenderness is about 3 this is the practical range of uh, columns but most of practical columns will lie between uh, these two values about 0.8 to less than 1.8 when i have lambda equal to 0.2 which can be found out using this formula you can have a look at design of steel columns tutorial in one of my playlist on steel design that will give detailed emphasis on this but here i'm talking about the big principles so when we have a stocky column then elastic critical buckling load is going to highly overestimate the loading in fact if i go to next slide here this is the reduction factor and this is the slenderness ratio in our case it is 0.2 it means there is no reduction the buckling resistance is going to be equal to afy area times material strength i'm assuming that material strength is s275 or 275 newton per millimeter square in that way if you have a look at this afy is 86.4 kilonewton for lambda dash 0.2 it means the reduction factor is going to be one so one times 86.4 the capacity of column is going to be 86.4 kilonewton not 1455 kilonewton which is really very high this is valid theoretically but in, in real life columns are going to be imperfect and these kind of columns small ones they, they will fail by material strength rather than buckling now how about if we increase the length of the column to 2.5 meters and then we will see that what do we get when we get 2.5 meters lambda dash is 2.89 we use this formula to work out lambda dash then we have only 10 kilonewton and we will see that what is the buckling resistance so let us first of all change the length of the column to so go to model again i will go to part again and here i will go to a section i will simply edit dimension value and here i will say 2500 and click done okay don't forget to regenerate the part otherwise it will not make sense and then i will submit it again a clean solution go to results click here make sure that you are having a look at first eigen value click ok i want to render the profile by three to see what's happening here so you can have a look at different steps to see how does it look like but i'm interested in first eigen mode now here load times 9.98 
kilonewton load is one and the result here is 9.98 kilonewton and you can see the theoretical values are quite close here from fe i've got 10 kilonewton and from pcr i've got 9.9 .9, so values are pretty close and here i have two point as much as 2.9 lambda dash so let us see how we can find out the buckling resistance if i go to this graph again you can see 2.9 is somewhere here and if i draw a line over here the reduction factor is about 0.1 so if i multiply 0.1 with af i'm choosing this graph c so it is roughly equal to 0.1 if i multiply this afy with 0.1 i get 8.6 it means that here elastic critical buckling load is so much near to the buckling resistance as you can see from this graph the, the theoretical curve is quite close to the actual curves that means that elastic critical buckling load is applicable when column is too slender when it is very skinny when it is very long now let us see how does it affect the results when we change the support conditions you can change the support conditions so for example if you wanted a pin pin then you will change fix b rotation will be allowed in each direction and at the top again rotation will be allowed in each direction only in u2 direction displacement is allowed this is a pin pin situation fix pin will be that i will fix the bottom and pinning the top the fourth configuration was fix free now here you can see that the critical buckling length changes to two times l so fix free means here i will simply click on and then i will suppress this boundary condition and that will simulate the fix t condition let us try this fix t condition and see what do we get a clean solution i will go and see the results the first mode is 620 because the buckling length changed hugely for fix fix it was 0.5 times l for pin it was one times l and for fixed and pin it was 0.7 for fixed and free it is 2l and that is reflected in these values here i just have value of 0.6 theoretical and so in that way you can find out elastic critical buckling load for pin pin conditions and then you can compare it with theoretical one i will put this excel sheet in the link down below so that you can have access to that for different conditions the results are pretty close between theoretical and fe part it means that finite element modeling using abacus can predict the elastic critical buckling load well note that boundary conditions have huge effect on buckling length which in turn has immense effect on buckling capacity of a section for a fixed free condition buckling length is 2l and the buckling load is only 0.6 for a pin condition buckling length is 1l and buckling load is 2.5 for a fixed pin condition which is this one buckling length is 0.7 and the load is double than pin pin condition which is 5.1 and for a fixed fixed condition buckling length is 0.5l and the load is double than fixed pin condition this means that buckling of column is hugely affected by boundary conditions